Warning, this video may contain a few curse words. If you are a child, or if you are an adult with sensitive widow ears, you might want to go watch a different video. Otherwise, stick around, you might learn something. What's up everybody, Lucifer here. When we left off with the ongoing V11 saga, I had just finished switching out the control board after a MOSFET blew and the wheel cut out. But then a new issue popped up. As you can see here, the battery display only showed one blinking bar, and the only way to get the wheel to power off was to hold the power button for 35 seconds, or manually disconnect the battery cables. The InMotion app showed that the battery level was at 0% in spite of the wheel being fully charged. It also showed a firmware error and to update to the latest version. However, the firmware update screen showed that the wheel was already in the current version. So I contacted Yuhiko again, and they said that occasionally the motherboard refuses to communicate with a new control board that has just been replaced. They sent me a new motherboard, which you see me switching out here. Of course, a new motherboard means activating the wheel with a new serial number and then going through the firmware updates again. Since this is actually the fourth time I've activated new motherboards on two separate V11s, I've found that using my son's Android tablet rather than my iPhone helps as it reduces the chance of update failure. Anyway, everything did go smoothly with the motherboard switch and updates. That should fix everything now, right? They sent me another motherboard. And everything appeared to be all fine and dandy. But now, like the first one, the 11 that I had, this one's having voltage calibration errors. Observe, I come to a complete stop. Please repair. It'll tip me off the wheel and say, please repair. Checking in the app, goes through diagnose and says, warm tips. Battery voltage calibration abnormal warning. Please recalibrate the battery voltage. Now, one quick way around this is to engage the spill spin kill switch under the handle bring the wheel exactly upright and in the app hit that calibration link yeah I know I have to put the wheel exactly upright there it goes self-inspection passed huh all right no more pedal dip Running diagnostic, it says, your wheel is in good condition. Yeah, right up until the time that you come to a complete stop again. Then you'll have to go through all that again. Yep, there it goes. I didn't even come to a complete stop that time. Just from uh, a little bit speedy and then slowing down rather quickly, I guess. Yep, voltage calibration abnormal. Spin kill switch. Hit the calibration link. Get it perfectly upright it again. There it goes. There. Another reset. Can you imagine having to do that every single time you come to a traffic light or an intersection or just have to stop because some schmo walks out in front of you? Every single time. Please be there. See, there it goes. Yep, 
every single time. What was that about? I don't know. 30 seconds or so. Still. Imagine if you're on a group ride. If you're on a group ride and you had to do that every time you stopped. Bye everybody. I'll catch up with you later. I gotta reset my fucking voltage calibration again. Since I've been through this before with my first V11, I know what comes next. Time to plug it in, get the battery up to 100%, and contact tech support. If you do own a Batch 4 V11, there's a good chance that you'll be contacting tech support at some point. So here are a few more tips so that you can be prepared for when that happens. If the battery will charge to 100%, go ahead and do it. If the Emotion app will connect to your wheel while it's plugged in, do that too. On the Diagnose screen, click the Upload Log link in the upper right hand corner. Then, get your screenshots in order. Tech support and repair guys love screenshots. Plus, it will save you time and hassle by avoiding some back and forth with Send a screenshot of that and we'll get back to you in a day or two with another question. Oops. It's a holiday weekend. Better make that three or four days, okay? So if you notice an error in the app while you are out riding, take a screenshot. It won't charge fully to 100%, take a screenshot. The battery display on the wheel freaking out, take a short video. The wheel making weird alien sounds, shoot that. Find a frayed wire or scorch mark, take a shot of that too. Basically, you need evidence that the problem is a manufacturer warranty issue and not something you did through writer error. Plus, it will speed up the process a bit if you have all this stuff prepared beforehand. Anyway, back to this voltage calibration error. Apparently, this could happen after installing new hardware, like those boards I did earlier. In order to get Emotion Global to attempt a remote calibration, you'll need to contact either the reseller you bought it from or in Motion Global directly, which is what I did with the first V11 I had. In Motion Global will schedule a date and time to contact you via WhatsApp text messenger. And at that time, you will have your wheel plugged into your charger and have it at 100% battery. They will direct you to press the diagnose link in the app for about 10 seconds to establish a remote connection and about a minute or so later, they will tell you that the calibration is complete. If contacting the reseller, like I did with the second V11, they will schedule a date and time to contact you by phone instead of text. At that scheduled time, they will call you and basically direct you to do the same steps. This time, Yuko stayed on the line with me while I actually tested the wheel, but it still had those same voltage errors. So they attempted the remote link and calibration a second time, but again, it still had those same voltage errors. So I guess they disconnected their text link from Inmotion Global, and at that point, they told me they will get back to me with what to try next. Four days later, I emailed them with a, what now? And they directed me to do a battery test, which I will outline for you here. In fact, I should have done this part myself before contacting tech support the first time. Oh well. First, make sure you are at 100% battery charge. Take screenshots to show the baseline of both batteries connected before testing. Then, power off the wheel and disconnect one of the battery cables. Then, turn the power back onto the wheel and take screenshots of both the diagnose screen and the battery detail screen. As you can see here in my case, the diagnose screen shows a red check mark on the battery category and shows a warning that says, battery failed, you may need to replace the battery. Please contact your point of purchase or email us at service at imscv.com. Yep, that's bad news. 
battery failure on a brand new electric vehicle. Eesh. Anyway, go ahead and power off the wheel. Disconnect that battery cable and plug the other one back in. Power up the wheel and take screenshots of the diagnose screen and the battery detail screen. On the second battery pack, it showed all green check marks on the diagnose screen and a warning that said, warning by some batteries not work. It will affect the performance of the vehicle. Please ride carefully. Which makes sense when you look at the battery detail screen. Of course some batteries may not work. Only half of them are plugged in. So I powered down the wheel and sent my shots to Yuko. They replied that they can either send me a new battery pack to install myself, or they could send me a shipping label to send the wheel to them. At this point, with all the ongoing string of issue after issue, I told them I gave up and to send me the shipping label. After all, I'm not getting paid to be your goddamn warranty repair tech. Okay, maybe I didn't actually say that last part out loud, or an email in this case, but I sure thought it. Actually, I shouldn't be so hard on Yuko, since they did help me through this fairly well. It's in motion that bears the blame here. Damn you in motion! Anyway, I got busy prepping the wheel for shipping by removing the aftermarket pads and spike pedals, and I put the stock pedals back on. I also put everything that originally came with the V11 back into the box. I did this because they actually sent me an entirely new V11 last time I sent one back with a failed battery. I mean, I may have wasted 2200 bucks on a chronically defective in motion product, but at least I still have some expensive accessories to hang on to, right? Hey, thanks for watching. If you found this video informative, helpful, or even slightly entertaining, please feel free to give it a like. And of course, if you have had some negative in motion experiences of your own that you'd like to get off your chest, feel free to leave a comment. Maybe it will be included in a future video. Until next time, make sure you wear your gear and go out and have some fun. Well, if you have a functioning wheel, of course. See ya!